Welcome to this brief video which gives an overview of the sexual health triptych model, uh, a model I designed as part of my doctoral studies back in 2011. The doctorate was called Sexual Health Matters – Learning for Life and it was uh, research that mapped across sexual health client need compared to the educational preparedness of nurses throughout England. The word triptych comes from the Greek for three panels and as I was exploring the data from the respondents in my research I found that they were referring to sexual health in three particular ways. In nursing in particular we talk about caring for our clients holistically so the first panel of the triptych is very clearly focused on the holistic dimensions of what it means to be a person and here there are four different elements which I'm going to explore with you over these next few slides. The first element from the Greek word soma means body and it's to do with the physicality of our bodies or the corporeality. When we uh, consider caring for people in a physical way that's what this term particularly refers to. And of course sexual health um, is truly important in the ways in which we communicate with our bodies, with ourselves and from one to others. A second key dimension in understanding human persons right down throughout the ages has been to do with the psyche or the mind. Carl Jung referred to this in Latin and called it the animus. It's our mind, our thoughts, our thinking. Whereas the pneuma, or as Carl Jung referred to this, the anima, that's often referred to as a person's spirit or their soul or their life beliefs. It's the individual ways in which uh, we as people are different from each other. So not just our physical bodies, certainly not just our minds, but something more that goes to make um, the person who we are. So here referred to as the pneuma or the life breath of a person. The final element of this holistic model, so not just referring to us as body, as mind and as life beliefs or soul, whichever term you prefer, but it's love and relationship, both with ourselves and with others. And there are three classical Greek words uh, used for this love and relationship, and those words are often translated into Latin as well. And I'm sure once I go through these, you'll realise how we use them in the English language. The first of these words is agape or iape in modern Greek and it's translated into Latin as caritas. Now that's the word that we translate into English as charity. So it's sort of familial love, the love we have for parents, for family, for close people and the very fact that we give into a charity box, for example, is showing how we love uh, the rest of humanity. It's our care for our family. Another term for love is philia or translated in Latin as amicitia and it means the love that we have for our close friends. So not necessarily people that we are sexual or romantic with but our close friends. Think of all the different English words in which this philia actually appears in. Everything from Philadelphia which means Philadelphos is uh, brotherly love. There are so many words in which we translate this into English. And the final of these three words referring to love is the one that I'm sure many people are more familiar with is eros or in Latin amor. It's where we get the word amorous from. So um, sex as in the physicality quite often is the sexual love, um, the sexual acts be performed with ourselves or with others. And that's where we get the word erotic from. So that's the first panel of this triptych model, the holistic dimensions of caring for individuals. And if we see individuals comprising of at least their body, their mind, their life beliefs and their love and relationships with themselves and others. So I've explored the various Greek and Latin words for uh, this, building up to what I'm proposing here as holistic care. The second panel of this triptych model, which was emerging from the data I gathered for the doctoral research, was ways in which the respondents saw sexual health and, and well-being as being impacted on, usually negatively, um, by other illnesses or conditions throughout a person's life. 
Now, just have a look at some of the illnesses, conditions, or life ways that I've mentioned on this slide here. So many of these actually cropped up in the research with the respondents saying that it was because of these issues that there was a secondary impact on the person's sexual health or their well-being. Just look at the various topics listed here, and these are just the tip of the iceberg, really. Um, so consider from your own client's point of view, whichever field of practice you're in, consider how they may be presenting to you, maybe with particular illnesses or life conditions or life ways, and then ask yourself how these may impact, and especially negatively, on that individual's sexual health and their well-being. The third and final panel um, are the different terminologies that are used when people generally think of sexual health. So, for example, if you were to tell someone you've been doing a session on sexual health, what's the first thing that comes to mind with them? And that first thing to come to mind are some of the traditional services that fall under the umbrella of uh, sexual health. So that could be genital urinary health care, HIV services, um, uh, contraception and reproductive health, but think of some of the wider ones as well that people may not normally consider in relation to sexual health, but indeed they are. And that's it from the point of view of this model of a triptych view of sexual health. You'll notice in this final image that there's a little quote from Michel Foucault underneath which talks of taboo, non-existence and silence. Sadly, that's part of the stigmatizing elements around sexual health in many people's lives.